Not Proverbs, no such thing as Proverbs 36. <laughs> so it's Proverbs 36, I mean Psalm 36, 11. Well, let's look what the Lord says in this verse right here. The Bible says, but, and I'm sorry, am I in the, I'm in the wrong chapter, I'm sorry, oh, 37, okay. Okay, there, are, there it is, okay. Let not the foot of the pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. Shall we pray, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, so much for the Bible, the Word of God, that is the Word of truth. Yes. And we were preaching this morning, Lord, thank you, Lord, that you are still sitting on the throne. And we always be sitting on your throne. Nobody can dethrone you. We believe that. And Lord, I pray for tonight as we touch on the subject of pride. And Lord, may we don't suffer with this or struggle with this issue or being prideful. Or let, Lord, give us a humble heart, a heart of humility. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. So again, we're almost in the end of this series on uh, Lord, I, uh, Lord, I have a problem uh, in this one, Lord, I need help. That's uh, the, the series that we're going through. But this one is, Lord, I have a problem with pride. Uh, pride is a problem. Uh, is a problem that can uh, reach all of us. And some people really uh, have a problem with that. And some recognize and some don't. But pride is a big problem. So Jesus came not only to die for us, and we have to understand that. He went to Calvary, we know that, so we can have salvation. But also that... That, but also to help you and me with our problems. We are problem people, don't we? We have problems. We have issues. And praise the Lord for Calvary. Praise the Lord for the Bible, the Word of God that can help us. So God offers you a new life in Christ. And He came, like I said this morning, the Bible says He came to, I came that you might have life and more abundantly. So, um, and, and, with, and with this power, we can overcome anything, any struggle in our lives. So our message series, the Lord, I need help. And in this series, we were looking at several topics, different topics. Uh, we can put so many topics in here, but I just put the ones the Lord uh, put in my heart. So, so tonight we will be talking about pride. How does God help you with the problem of pride? And, uh, you know, if you have a problem with pride, listen, you can get rid of that, that problem. If you don't, uh, just learn about it. You say, Lord, I said, Pastor, I don't, I don't have a problem with pride. And that's good. But we can learn about something tonight about this. The, the question is, do you ever struggle with pride? Yeah, I think uh, one time or another, I think all of us can maybe, maybe ex uh, experience that. So it's a tricky question. Do you, do you ever struggle with pride? Because uh, to, be, uh, to be very careful, how, we need to be very careful how we respond to the answer. There is an irony with pride where the, the proud person often thinks they're humble, and the humble person often thinks they're proud. There's an irony on that. So did you know that according to, to uh, uh, the, a variety of surveys, most people consider themselves above average and interesting. Sometimes as high as 90% of, of people consider themselves above average. So tonight we are talking about the problem of pride. And it's a big one for both Christians and no-Christians. You say, well, are Christians prideful? I've seen quite a few in my years in church. I've seen quite a few, and out of church as well. I work with some Christian people, uh, uh, and I've worked with other Christian people through the years. And I'll tell you what, I've seen the problem of pride in some people. Not saying all of them, but I've seen it. So you see, uh, at, at, every stage, uh, and at every stage of our Christian development and in every sphere of our Christian discipleship, pride is the greatest enemy and humility our greatest friend. You follow that? So, so let's look at tonight at this problem called pride that resides or can reside in many people's heart. It can. So let's look at this from several points tonight. Number one, the problem of pride. Is pride a problem? Yes, it is a problem. It is a problem, a big problem in the life of many people. Uh, I remember years ago, and I was not even a Christian in those years, but we had a neighbor back in Portugal. Uh, this guy it was prideful as could be. Very arrogant and prideful. And, and ironically, this happened, uh, uh, and he was talking how much money he had. <laughs> he, I mean, uh, my dad told me this story. Uh, my dad was a very humble guy, believe me. If you met my dad, he was a very humble guy. But my dad came home and told me this story because at the time I was already a teenager, 
and I work for him. I, I ran his business. So anyway, and he's telling me, like, you know what I witnessed today? I said, what did you witness today for that? And he told me the story. He said, this man, I knew it was my neighbor. I knew. He was very prideful. And he always talked about that he had this much money. He had this thing, that thing. And he, kept, he kept boasting about it. And that day, as we was talking about in outside of town, another time, my dad was with him, and I don't know what they were doing, but his son was with him, his oldest son, interesting, and he was talking uh, uh, about his, you know, his things that he had, his wealth and stuff, and believe me, he was not that wealthy, but he, he talked about it. And his son got into a tractor, a working tractor, disengaged the tractor. I don't know how he did it. I think the keys was in the ignition, the tractor's on, and goes right through a house. <laughs> With the tractor. I mean, and like, and then he goes, uh, then he began from, from uh, elevating himself and began to cry. He goes, oh, what's going to happen to me? And I have no money to pay for this. And he goes on and on, crying now. And like, and my dad said, oh, I didn't want to laugh. I didn't want to say, see it. It's God's judgment. But that was really funny to see him talking about all the stuff that he had. And suddenly, he had nothing. <laughs> I was like, Wow. But that was my dad, and my dad's the way he said it. It really, it was like, really? <laughs> I knew his son, I knew him, uh, but he was a very prideful man. So pride is a problem. So pride has to, as the, uh, the cause, I'm sorry, it was the cause on which Satan caused Satan to fall and many other angels who follow him. So pride has been a problem in the hearts of of Christians and non-Christians throughout the ages. And, and even as I speak tonight, there's quite a bit of folks struggle, do, do struggle with the problem of pride. So on the other hand, there are some others who rejoice on their pride. Some struggle, they don't want to be prideful, but they find themselves there. But others actually enjoy their pride. They really enjoy it. So pride is a problem and always will be a problem in the heart of man. I know I ever see people that walk, I say they had their nose up in the air, they're going like this. The way they walk, they say that's how prideful they are. So anyway, number one is the problem of pride. Do you agree that pride is a problem? I agree. I know, I know pride is a problem. So uh, pride is such a problem that letter A, God hates pride. The first biggest problem with pride is that God hates it. Look what it says in Proverbs 16.5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Wow, that's enough said right here, right? So there are, there are a few things about the Bible talks about, but about God hating. But God's hateful pride is, is repeated several times in the Scriptures. Pride is such a sin that, that contaminates the heart of men in such a way that God hates it. Folks, it must be really a bad sin in order for God to hate such a sin. It must be. So now, only God hates pride, but He actively appears opposes pride. Actually, you go to James chapter 4, verse 6. So not only God hates pride, he so opposes pride. Go to, look what it says in James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace. I wait for you to get there. <laughs> I wanted you to see for yourself. I already have the verses here, so it's easy for me to keep on going. Uh, and I know how it feels when you try to look in your Bible, and the pastor's already five miles down the road. So... <laughs> So look what it says. Are you there? All right. Look what it says. God opposes, but not only hates, but he opposes. Look what it says. But God giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So pride, in the context of this verse, refers to, to an arrogant attitude that manifests itself as independent from God and contrasts strictly with humility. So such arrogance is a hazard to our well-being and, and success in the life because it keeps us from fearing God. A prideful person a lot of times don't care about God. They're too arrogant. They're too prideful even to admit they are sinners. Right. I'm not a sinner. I don't need God. What is that? Pride. Right. That's what it is. You talk with somebody in the street, oh, I don't need this. A uh, man that is bleed, bleeding to death on the cross, I don't need that. That's arrogance and pride. So the reason God hates pride is because the proud person tries to displace God from who he is. God becomes an important, meanless, to, and weak to that person because such a person in his own mind becomes, listen to this, his own God. 
He himself, oh, I don't need this. I don't need that. Look who I can do. I can take care of this. Look who I am. Isn't, isn't one man a king in the Bible, Nebuchadnezzar, that was that prideful? And he looks at what he have and he began to boast of all what he had. That's pride. And God says he opposes. You know what happened to him immediately, right? So pride consists in attributing to ourselves the honor, privileges, and and in in uh, pr uh, prerogatives, right and power that is due to God alone. So pride, at its core, listen to this: is idolatry of self. A proud person has put himself or herself in God's place. Did you get that? Pride is is when a person tries to take God's place. And God will not share his glory, listen to this, with anyone. He will not. Who are we even to elevate our, ourselves to such a position to say, oh, look at me, look what I can do, look what I conquer, look what I have. That's all pride. So God hates pride. So a prideful spirit, uh, let me go back here a little bit. So pride, let me go back. Oh, yeah, let it be. I didn't give you let it be, did I? No, so let it be. Pride hates God. Pride hates God. The first one is, yeah, that's why I was confused. Uh, God hates pride. Secondly, pride hates God. Not only does God hate pride, but pride hates God. Go to actually go to Psalm chapter 10, verse 4. Psalm chapter 10, verse 4. Now look what it says here very clearly. It says, Psalm 10 verse 4 says, the wicked. I mean, we know so. Who is the wicked? Oh, we, we immediately you think about evil, mean people. No, the wicked, if God considers the lost, those who are lost, look what it says. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after whom? God. God is not in, the, in all his thoughts. Listen to, listen to this, folks. Why so many people don't care about God, churches, or anything? Because they have their own gods. They're okay. The God to them is not even in their mind. They don't think about Him. So pride has no room for God because pride does not want to submit to God. Pride hates God because pride thinks it can take God's place. So don't you know that prideful people have no, uh, have no place, no time for God at all? They don't have any room at all for God in their lives. They are in, into themselves. Oh, they are full of themselves. Like you said, that's the best word. They're full of themselves. So full are they that they have no room for God at all. You know, when you fall, you fall. It goes like this. It goes like this. If you just finish a meal, and it happened to me many times, you just fall, you just had a nice meal, and, and, and your wife goes, uh, what do you like for supper? Oh, no, I just had lunch. <laughs> I mean, I just eat lunch. I had a kid think straight. We do fall. Until you, you begin to get empty, then you think about it. Unless these people empty themselves of their pride, they don't see God for who they are. So spiritual pride is an illusion that we, that we are uh, 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 good enough to, to, to run our own lives. So only God can run our lives with pride seeks to displease God because we think we can handle it without looking to God. Uh, C.S. Lewis wrote these words, a proud man, and I quote his words, uh, is always looking down on things and, and people. And of course, as, like what he says, as long as you are looking down, you cannot see something that is above you. You get that? We look and pride people usually look down at people it, they, it's better than any, anybody else, but he forgot, so as long as you look down, you don't look up. Somebody's greater than you. So those who are looking down all the time do not look up to find God. God hates pride, and pride hates God. Number two, let us see. Pride forfeits wisdom from God. A third problem with pride is that pride forfeits wisdom from God. God has, has this to say about, about the humble. Actually, go to Psalm chapter 25, verse 9. Look what God says about the humble people. Psalm 25, verse 9. Look what it says. The meek will be guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his ways. A prideful person will not listen to anybody but himself. 
They're too prideful to listen. You know, to try to teach somebody or give somebody directions of life or somebody, and if they're too prideful, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to. So, uh, now couple that with Proverbs 26, 12, it says, Seest thou a man, a uh, man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Wow, God is clear. So only the humble knows God's wisdom because only the humble will receive the wisdom for that comes from God. So you and I are reading God's word daily. Why? Because we want God to give us something to direct us, to teach us in the ways of life. Is that a humble attitude? Of course it is. Pride person doesn't think they need help from God, so they forfeit the wisdom that, that they could be theirs as well. So prideful person is so full of himself that even think, uh, even to think about God, that don't even help them. So let it be, we say, pride always leads to a fall. Pride always leads to a fall. A big problem with pride is that pride always leads to a fall. Always, every time. Look what it says in Proverbs, go to Proverbs 18, uh, 16, 18. I'll wait for you. Proverbs 16, 18. Go there. It's a popular verse. Most of us know this verse. I want you to see it. Look what it says there. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before fall. So often the fall takes a place in this life, but if it's not in this life, then certainly in the next one. Prideful people don't care about God because they think that they are their own gods and by their own actions, and, and, and many of them do think that they can't get away with it. But that's what they think. But that doesn't, doesn't mean that they will. No one get away with this sin, uh, especially pride. So let, look what it says in Isaiah chapter 2, verse 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts will, shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, he shall be brought low. God says right here, that day will come. In Isaiah 2, 17, it says, And the loftiness of men shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall he made low. For the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So Charles Spurgeon says this way, Every person has a choice between being humble or being pride. Being prideful is a choice that people make. You can humble yourself and let God do his, his thing in you and work through you, which is why Paul warns us in 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 12, it says, Wherefore let him that thinketh, he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. So what is the problem with pride? God hates pride. Pride hates God. Pride forfeits God, uh, uh, wisdom from God, and pride always leads to fall. So we see the problem of pride. Number two, understanding pride. Let's understand pride tonight. Before we talk uh, about how to deal with pride, let's talk a few, uh, get a few moments here and try to understand what pride uh, better from a biblical perspective. Letter A, healthy pride. This such thing as healthy pride? Yes, there's such thing as a healthy pride. Look what it says right here. Letter A, healthy pride. One of the things that we learn from God's word is that there is a such thing as a healthy pride. There is a place for boasting, and there is a place for healthy pride in itself. Okay, so number one, boasting in the Lord, it is a wonderful thing to do. So boasting in the Lord, first of all, the proper place for boasting is not in ourselves, but in the Lord. In other words, instead of taking the credit for the ability and the things that God allows us to do, we just give glory to God. So somebody said, Pastor, what a great message. Usually what I say, thank you, praise the Lord. It's not my message, folks. God put it in my heart. Why am I going to give credit to myself? It's not me doing. You know how many times I open the Bible and I can't find a message? And you pray and you pray, Lord, I need a message. Lord, give me a message. Go me a, give me a theme for the year. It's not me. God lays in your heart. So if somebody asks you, why are you going to say, oh, thank you so much? No. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We give the praise and glory to Him. And my answer is what is so Pridefulness gives credit to itself, to oneself. Pridefulness boasts about what we can do and what we can, we can accomplish without giving God the glory. 
May we always recognize with a humble heart that God is doing was what God is doing in us and through us. But think about it. Before I got saved, I don't know if I could preach. I don't know if I could speak. I didn't even like to talk to people. Might as well, you know, preaching to people. Guess what God did? He transformed you from the inside out. Guess what happened? It's God's doing. So we give him honor and glory and praise. It goes to him. So humbleness of heart fits always. Pridefulness, on the other hand, will find many closed doors. I think that prideful people don't have many friends. It's just me. Look what it says in Jeremiah 9.23. Thou sayest the Lord, let not the wise men glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty men glory in his might. Let not the rich men glory in his riches. Verse 24 says, but let him that glory it, glory in this. That he understand, understand it and know it, me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, saith the Lord. You see that? God over and over talks about this prideful thing. Number two, honest self-assessment. Honest self-assessment. The Bible also talks about healthy pride in the sense of an honest self-assessment. This is why Paul, writing Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it says, For I say, to the grace give, given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to, as God had uh, dealt to every man, the measure of faith. Even Paul says that. Don't think that you're better than anybody else. You're not. Oh, again, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, it says, For, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. And verse 4 says, But to every man prove his own work, and then shall he, give, he have rejoicing in, his, in himself alone and not in another. So again, we see this. We are to not think that we're better than anybody else. Listen, we might status living, you might be in a better situation financially, but it doesn't mean that because I'm financially more in a better situation than somebody else, it means I'm better than they, they are. Because, folks, at the foot of the cross, we're all the same. Flesh and blood, we all, it doesn't matter where, where background you come from or culture you come from. It doesn't matter anything. At the foot of the cross, we are the same. And I tell you what, because someone has a higher position than we have in life and make more money, whatever they do, it doesn't mean they're better than we are. We're human beings. So it is good and right when you have finished a project and done a, gr a good job and to have a sense of satisfaction and, or in your work. That is a healthy pride because it's based on honest assessment. You know, you did a good work, and you look at it, and you're satisfied. It doesn't mean that's wrong. It's, you, you look, wow, look, I did a good job. You, you know, but in the end, you can say, praise the Lord. Lord, you give me wisdom to do this thing. So humility is honestly assessing ourselves in the light of God's holiness and our, sen, uh, uh, and, I'm sorry, and our sinfulness. So true humility is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking of, our, of yourself less. So Timothy Killer is another name, cause it is the freedom of self-forgetfulness. So we don't glorify God by, by minimizing the good gifts that he has given us. We, uh, we need to think of ourselves honestly in the light of God's word and take a, a healthy pride in what God is doing in us and through us. So is, pride, is healthy pride is healthy pride? Yes, there is. And it's a wonderful thing to have. Let it be so wrongful pride. Wrongful pride. So, however, there is not the problem we're talking about uh, here tonight. We're going to talk about this. We're talking about a wrongful pride that cuts off from God and others. So, this wrongful pride is rightfully called the first sin. Pride in the first sin became uh, because it was the very uh, first sin committed, and it is first uh, first sin because all other sins proceeds out of that. And you know what? Why Satan was expelled out of heaven? Why? You know, because of pride. The sin of pride. So, pride was the sin of the devil that caused him to rebel against God. In the beginning, he rebelled. And we see this in Isaiah 14. Actually, go to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. Let's look at this. We see that pride is an old, old sin. And God hates it. Look what it says in Isaiah 14, 12. Oh, interesting. This week, actually, 
uh, the young man, Bob, that I've been asking for you guys to pray, uh, you folks to pray for, you know, he, he came to me and he said, well, uh, what do you think? Is Satan, uh, uh, Jesus' brother, is like, oh, you want me to explain it to you? Oh, it's a good discussion. And he said to me, so I love to go to your Bible study. I said, when he goes to me, but I don't want to be converted. I said, in my heaven, you might be converted. <laughs> I said, you come. You, know, you want to understand the Bible more. He seems more and more intrigued about it. Well, right here, look what it says. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did not weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, look what it says, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt myself, my uh, throne above the stars of God. I will set also upon the, the mountain of the congregation in the sight of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You see the I wills, I wills, I wills, I wills. This is the language of prideful people. I will, I will, I am, I am. And they, I, 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 it's all prideful stuff. So pride was the devil's downfall. Pride was not only the first sin committed, it is the source of all other sins, which makes it the worst sin of all. So get this, pride is more than the first of the deadly sins. It is in itself in a sense of all sins right here. It is a horrible sin. Let me put it this way. Jonathan Edwards wrote this thing, and I quote his words. Pride is the worst part of the body of sin, and that... The first sin that ever entered in the universe, and the last sin is rooted out. It is God's most stubborn enemy. That's Jonathan Edwards. So let us see. Let's go. Pride leads to what pride leads to. Pride leads to other sins, but it, it leads particularly to this, fa the, this falling five sins here. Number one, disobedience instead of submission. Pride, uh, first of all, pride leads to disobedience instead of, of uh, submission. Look what it says in Isaiah chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellious is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the, of the Lord, he had also rejected from thee from being king. So this was Samuel's rebuke to Saul when Saul's pride led him to rebel against God. Clear, a clear instruction that was given to him. You can see this, that God says right here, the rebellious is the sin of witchcraft. See how bad it is? You know, and we live in the world where people fall of pride. Very prideful people we live in this world. And I believe in your mind, you might say, I know many people that are very prideful people. So, number two, hypocrisy instead of authenticity, authentic living, I'm sorry. Hypocrisy instead of authentic living. Secondly, pride leads to hypocrisy. No way you're going to go that far. The Sadducees and the Pharisees are a living picture of hypocrisy because of their pride. Jesus said to them, even to the Pharisees, look at these words. But all their works they do for this to be seen of man. That's pride. They make broad, broad their, their uh, uh, philatories, I believe, is, and lodge their borders in their garments. So these people are prideful people, and God saw them clearly. And they were going, they want to be, the, they want the praise of man. And how prideful they were. And God, Jesus called them out. So the Pharisees were not living, uh, they were not living uh, authentically for God, but putting on a show for men to see. They were trying to impress people which were, which their, their, with their many prayers, their long garments, and their, their works. To get this, they could deceive people, but they could not deceive God, and Jesus called them out. Jesus said, you are a bunch of hypocrites because of their pridefulness. So get this, pride makes people pretend they don't want people to think bad of us, so we pretend we are better than they are. Here's the thing. Pretending doesn't make you better than anyone else. We can pretend with, that we bought somebody else all day long, but we're not. You know, there are people out there that pretend to be this movie star, that movie star, this rock star, this thing. You know what? They never be them. They are what they are, so don't try to be somebody else. Be yourself. Right. Be yourself. Look what it says in Proverbs 12, 9. He that is despised and had a servant is better than he that honor itself and labored bread. Who cares if anyone, everyone thinks you are rich when you, uh, and you open up the refrigerator and have nothing to eat? 
Some people give that impression. I'm so rich, I have this, and we open the refrigerator, it's empty. And some of them don't have a refrigerator. Anyway, so <clears throat> it's like lying about, about gas mileage. You, you might look uh, good in front of others, but it doesn't help you when you pay at the pump. You see, false humility falls under this category, too. You know, you know false humility, uh, it, it, it's a false thing to do. It's not a right thing to do. But some people boast about those things, but they make, to, make us believe that they, they are something, but deep inside they're not what they're claiming to be. And pride causes people to act that way. So it is when you pay someone a genuine compliment and, and they say, it was nothing. Well, I was, it was nothing. It was something. That's false humility. When someone pays you a compliment, the proper response is, thank you. Isn't it? Thank you. Get this. A false humility is now more to be praised than a false pride. Depreciating oneself too much, it is a wrong, uh, and uh, esteeming oneself too much. So we need to let go of all pretense and just like genuine and live genuine lives with each other each day. Did you mess up? Admit it. Are you bad at something? Don't say you're good at it. Are you good at something? Don't you say you're bad at it. Relax. Be genuine. Be real. Don't try to be somebody else. Learn to laugh at yourself sometimes. <laughs> I do that sometimes. You know, sometimes when I sing and I'm not singing the right words, I'm already smiling because it's not the right words. And what are you going to do? Stop the music. No, we're going to keep on going. I mean, you know. Sometimes I smile at myself, like, I can't believe I just said that word. It's a, so if you go in to laugh about it, 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 it's something that, that anyway, live, laugh about sometimes some things that you do yourself sometimes. Just laugh at it. Number three, judgmental spirit instead of love. A judgmental spirit instead of love. Look, it says in 1 Corinthians 8, 1, knowledge puff it up, but charity edify it. Acknowledge Knowledge puffed, I'm sorry, but love builds up. This is the problem of self-righteous. Pride makes us feel worthy to judge another person. When you judge another person, look what it is. Is it dangerous? We're putting our place, ourselves in the place of God. God is the judge, not us. Right. We're not judges over anyone. We're not to judge anyone. The Bible says you, we, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, so let God judge you and let everything else go. You can't love someone when you, uh, you're too busy trying to judge them. Or you either love people or you be judgmental towards people. But to judge people, it's absolutely wrong. Number four, boasting instead of meekness. Boasting instead of meekness. Look what it says in Proverbs 27 too, Let another man praise thee, and, and not thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thy own lips. Let not another, let, I'm sorry, let another man praise thee and not, and not thyself, uh, uh, thine own mouth, I'm sorry, a stranger and not thy own, own lips. The Apostle Paul wrote these words in 2 Corinthians 12, 5, of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. You see, even Paul said, I will not do that. Look what it says in verse 16, for I thought I, I would desire to, Desire to glory, I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, at least any man should think of me above that which he see it, uh, seek it, uh, see it me to be, or that he hear it of me. So that means even it, it, if it, it's true, you shouldn't be boasting about, uh, about it. So it seems uh, we all feel this need to prove ourselves sometimes. And yet, boasting never makes you look good anyway. Let you yay be yay, Jesus said, and let you nay be nay. People want to believe you, they believe you. People don't want to believe you, don't try to keep going. You know, they're not going to believe you. So number five, isolation instead of community. Oh, then finally, pride leads to isolation instead of community. Look what it says in Proverbs 3.10. I'm giving you a lot of uh, 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 scripture today. Only by pride come and contention. But with, with the well of advice is wisdom. Live in harmony with another person. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people uh, who, who are uh, of low position. Do not be deceiving to them. Do not put a front to them. Be humble. I tell you what, prideful people, when people begin to see you as a proud and arrogant person, you're going to lose their friendships. 
They're going to kind of walk away from you. Why be prideful? We have more to lose being prideful than being humble. Look what it says in Romans 12, 6, having then gifts uh, deferring according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy let him prophesy according to the, the uh, preparation of faith. So pride isolate, isolates uh, uh, us from other people. The proud man set himself up, and in doing so, he sets himself apart. To imagine that one does not need community with others is a terrible form of pride. Pride is the root in a sense of all sin. Pride leads to disobedience instead of submission, to hypocrisy instead of, pride, instead of identity, authentic living, to judgmental spirit instead of love, to boasting instead of meekness, and to isolation instead of community. Pride is a great sin which leads to all of those things. So we explain, I explained all this. What's the solution? What can we do about this? We know in this, I uh, tried to expose as much as I could about this, this problem of pride. And what's the solution? Let it, number three, the solution for pride. What's the solution? Can a prideful person stop being prideful? Yes. Can God forgive a prideful person? Yes. Can we change our ways? Absolutely. So the, the, the solution for pride, let me share with you some things about, eight things about this, all right? Letter A, how we start. Confess your sin before the Lord. Is pride sin? Then confess it before the Lord. Confess your sin before the Lord, the, the uh, holy God, that, and he can make a great difference in our lives if we do this. If pride is, is, is dependence and rebellion from God, then we need to go to him and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. Please forgive me. In Scripture, anytime someone gets uh, close to God, they immediately confess their sin. A person that now confesses their sin because they, for whatever reason, they're being prideful. Humbleness of heart causes us to go before a holy God and say, Lord, I have sinned against you. That's a humbleness. Let me put it this way. It doesn't take a humble heart to ask someone to forgive you for something. It takes a humble heart. It's a heart of humility. Prideful people say, oh, Deal with it. I don't care if you hurt or not. That's your problem. That's pride. Humility says, please forgive me. Is it hard? Of course it is. Of course it is hard. In Scripture, anytime someone gets close to God, like I said, they immediately confess their sin. Job, uh, uh, tell, us, tell God this way, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the year. Uh, that's Job 42, 5, and said, but, but none, uh, none my eyes, uh, I'm sorry, but now my eyes seek, uh, I might see it thee, I'm sorry, wherefore I harbor myself and repent in dust and ashes. When Isaiah saw God in a vision, he cried out. Look what he said, Isaiah 6, 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You're talking about a prophet here, folks. A man that, that, that was taking messages from God. And he, when he saw God in his holiness, he said, woe unto me. This man, Dr. Plummer, wrote this, this, these words. No man ever thought himself a greater sinner before God than he really was. And he who sees no sin in himself will feel, will need, I mean, will, will need no Savior at all. Andrew Mur uh, Mary, uh, Murray says, says these things, these words, it is pride that, that made redemption needful. It is from our pride we, uh, we need above e everything else uh, uh, to be redeemed. Folks, uh, uh, pride, a prideful person is too prideful to admit they're wrong and even to, to admit that they need God at all or even did they sin against God. But to confess our sin of pride before the Lord is the beginning, listen to this, of humbleness. When we come to that point that we admit our sin and we bow down and we ask God for forgiveness, that's the beginning. Number two, consider the cross. Oh, consider the cross. Galatians 6, 4 says, But God forbid and I should glory, save the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world uh, is crucified unto him and unto the world. I tell you, I tell you this, humbleness will look at the cross and see the need for salvation. Humbleness. Prideful people would say, wow, what did he do that for? Why are you trying to... And they go on and on and on. 
Dr. Lloyd-Jones wrote these words, there are, there's only one thing I know of that crushes me to the ground and humiliates me to the dust is that, is, is, I'm sorry, and that is to look at the Son of God and especially contemplate the cross. John Scott writes this thing, every time we look at the cross, Christ seems to be saying to us, I am here because of you. Nothing in history or in, this, in the universe cuts it down like the cross. It is a there, if we want salvation, it is there that we have to admit, put our pride down and accept humbleness and say, Lord, you did that for me. We often sing the hymn, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but lost and put contempt in all my pride. You see, we have to humble ourselves even to sing such a song. Prideful people will not sing that. Let us see. Consider your salvation. For by grace I eat saved, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, uh, I eat saved through faith is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, right. not of works, lest any man should boast. We cannot boast about salvation because we did nothing. God did it all for us. And it's with a humble heart that we come before him and accept the salvation. Letter D, give God the glory. Wow, give God the glory. All of our accomplishments, give God the glory. All the things that we do, we should always give him the glory. I tell you what, I don't know about you. I'm not boasting here. Believe me, folks. I give God glory all day long. I do a job, I finish. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping me, giving me the wisdom to go to this job. Everything, I'm telling you, I'll go all day long. If you, know, if you work beside me, you're going to hear it. You know what? I'm, I'm a needy person too. I need God. Give God the glory all day long. I think if we learn to give God the glory for everything, give God the glory for your food when you eat, praise Him, tell Him to bless the food, give God the glory for your health, give God the glory for your, for your children, give God the glory for what you have, for your job, all those things, give God the glory. We see this in the life of Joseph as a glamour. When Joseph came to Pharaoh to interpret his dream, he claimed no credit for himself. What did he do? And actually in Genesis 41, 16, and Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in mind, uh, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He didn't say, not on myself, I'm not capable of doing that, God does. I'll tell you what, all the gifts that we have, all the abilities that we have, God gave it to us. That's why some people have more abilities than others. You know, we all made the same. Listen, some people are great musicians. Some people are great singers. Some people are great speakers. Some people, are, you know, you're talking about uh, plumbers and electricians and this and that. We can go on and on and on. They have great gifts. You give those gifts to them. God give. You say, well, you know, no, God give. Some people, are, listen, I remember. I remember when I used to play soccer, and I, would, I tried to be, a, I, I won, I was my, my, my biggest dream, be a soccer player. And some of my friends, they came. I mean, I had a group of five friends. We were so close together. You know what? I was the only one that played sports. It's not because they didn't try. They did try. You know what? They didn't have the ability to do it. You know what? I didn't find better, myself better than anybody. They used to come watch me play. You know what? God, God gave me the ability, but God gave them different abilities that I didn't have. So what do we do? Give God the glory. Letter E, submit to God's word. One of the greatest proofs that we have a humble heart, folks, for the Lord and towards God is that how we submit to his word. And Jesus said, if you love me, I preached that the other night, love, I obey my commandments, is our submission to the word of God. Listen, you might be the only one but if we do that you know we do that it's a beginning of humbleness submit to God's word prideful people will not submit but I tell you a humble heart will submit to God's word then F honor others before yourself this is a tough one this is where we find out if we truly dealing with pride in our lives Andrew Murray read, uh, wrote this, these words it is easy to think we humble ourselves before God. Humili uh, humility towards men will be the only uh, sufficient proof that our humility before God is real. 
Humility before God is nothing, is nothing if not proved in humility before man. That's why the Bible talks about honoring one another, being servants of one another, submitting yourselves to one another, considering one another better than ourselves. End of quote. Pres President Truman said these words, you can accomplish anything in life provided that you do not, I'm, I'm sorry, that you do not mind who gets the credit. Wow. Look what it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly, affection to one another, with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in loneliness of mind, let, let each esteem other better than themselves. As Christians, we should rejoice together as we exalt the Lord. Uh, but I tell you what, here's another one here. Uh, Dave Harvey writes these things. One great uh, measure of our humility is whether we can be ambitious uh, for someone else's agenda. Our willingness to make others a success is a great measure of the purity of our ambitions. Wow. You see the difference between pride and humbleness. Timothy Killer says this about humility, for it is not to, uh, it's not, I'm sorry, for it is not to matter whether it was their success or your success, not to care if they did, did it or not, I'm sorry, did it or you did it, you are as happy that they did it, it as if you had done it yourself. Honor others before yourself. That is a hard one to do. But I tell you what, it's a great thing to do. Have that spirit of humility. I tell you what, I believe firmly that if we have a spirit of humility, it's just me now, not those guys that I quote for me now. If we have a spirit of humility, we have a better life. We enjoy life much better than be prideful. I really believe that. I really believe that. I conclude with this. Pride has been a problem in the hearts of Christian and non-Christian for many, many years. And even I speak, I believe there's pride for people out there. So pride is a problem, and it always will be a problem in a man's heart. But I tell you what, can a prideful person stop being prideful? I'm just admiring that conclusion words over there. <laughs> but I tell you what, <laughs> it's like it's amazing what they're doing over there. <laughs> I cannot do that. You know, I cannot make those things going around. But anyway, you know, can a prideful person stop being prideful? Of course he can. Of course they can. If we start with these, these ones that I give you here, we can. And we can be humble people in which we love God and love others. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord Father, for this lesson tonight, Lord. I think all of us need to hear that because we have a sinful heart and it's easy to become that way. But Father, help us to stay humble, stay close to your heart, Lord to obey you and love you, Lord, to apply your word to our lives, to be kind to other people and loving to other people. And Lord, I just pray in Jesus' name. Amen.